Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan. Welcome back to another MPB recap. I apologize for the delay. There was supposed to be a video last week, but my laptop broke. So the circumstances um, were out of my control and I had to skip the recap last week, but here we are again. Let's go over weeks 9 through 11 of the 2023 Nippon Professional Baseball season. Uh, and I think now that we're dead smack in the middle of the year, I'd like to change uh, the format of things a bit. You know, in the past, I've been going through each team and sort of just generally talking about, you know, who's doing well, who's not doing well, major storylines surrounding the club. But now we're starting to get settled in uh, and we can get more into the nitty gritty and talk about some actual series uh, while also talking about, you know, individual players here and there. So uh, what I want to do is go all the way back to the week of May 23rd where we last left off and look at the series results over the past uh, three weeks. Uh, before we do that though, let's quickly cover the standings prior to the June 11th games uh, in the Central League. The Tigers are in first, four and a half games behind are the DNA Bay Stars, six back the Hiroshima Carp, seven and a half back the Yomiri Giants, 13 back the Yokult Swallows, and 14 back the Chunichi Dragons. Over in the Pacific League, the Lotte Marines and Oryx Buffaloes are tied for first. Uh, the Hawks are just behind them, uh, one game back. And then six and a half back, you have the Nippon Ham Fighters. Eight back, the Cebu Lions. And eight and a half back are the Rakuten Eagles. Um, so that's where we're at right now. And let's dive into what's actually been happening. So May 23rd to 25th, here are the series results. Uh, let's get started with Oryx. They swept Rakuten in a two-game set. Shinpeita Yamashita threw another gem in the opener. Seven innings, two hits, no runs. Buffaloes won that game 8 to nothing. And then in the second game, Takahisa Hayakawa of the Eagles had a great start, uh, but it was wasted as the Buffaloes mounted a late comeback from 5-1 to one down. Kotaro Kuribayashi hit a two-run walk-off home run off Yuki Matsui. Those were the first runs Matsui had given up all year. Uh, so really a gut-wrenching loss for Rakuten. They've had a lot of trouble holding late leads this year. But Matsui was kind of their one constant. And to be fair, he's been good uh, since then too. But uh, the bullpen, you know, it's really struggled this year. Uh, and they have the worst bullpen ERA in the Pacific right now. Moving on, SoftBank took two of three from Nippon Ham. The Hawks pitching, especially their bullpen, was just phenomenal the first two games. Uh, the relievers threw a total of eight perfect innings in those two games. Uh, really shows you why you can't afford to go down early against against a team like this. Uh, the fighters did win the third game to avoid the sweep at home. Also, Alan Hansen hit his first career MPB home run this series. Uh, results haven't been there for him quite yet so far, but he's hitting the ball really hard. You know, just making a lot of good contact, but quite a bit of bad luck. Uh, then Lotte beat Cebu in the only game they played. Uh, the other game got rained out. I was actually at the one game that they played. The Marines won 11-1. Uh, Tatsuya Imai got knocked out early in the third inning. He allowed eight earned runs. Really ugly night for him. Uh, the Marines crushed five home runs in total. This is not a team that usually uh, hits the ball out of the park, but you know, on, on this particular occasion, they were crushing it. Hisanori Yasuda hit two himself. Uh, and then CC Mer Mercedes, who was typically a starter, uh, came in and recorded his first career save, finishing uh, the, the night with three scoreless innings. So this was a really fun game for me to be in the Marines cheering section for. Uh, they put a serious beating on the Lions. Moving on to the Central League sets, uh, Yomiri took two of a three from DNA. Bay Stars won the first game. Kentaro Tyra threw seven shutout innings. Uh, and if I remember correctly, he took a line drive off the hand in the first inning of that start. So great effort by him fighting through that and pitching so well in the end. Uh, Shosei Togo answered in game two with a complete game shutout. You know, Togo hasn't been quite as sharp this year. You know, not as many strikeouts as in previous years, but he's been doing exactly what's asked of him, uh, going very deep into, into starts. It's rare that he doesn't go at least into the seventh inning. Uh, and it's pretty common for him to to throw well over 110, even 120 pitches. So, you know, whether or not that's good for his long-term health, probably not. But he is a true workhorse, no doubt about that. Uh, and then the Giants won the rubber match, 5-4. to four. Pretty tight game. And, and this was uh, very you know, optimistic for the Giants because their bullpen, which has blown a ton of late leads this year, actually managed to hold on to the lead. 
Uh, you know, it still isn't good by any stretch of the imagination, but with the trade for Kei Suzuki and the return of Kota Nakagawa after he missed all of 2022, um, you know, there's at least some reinforcements to throw out. Otherwise, the, the already bad relievers are going to get even worse throughout the year as they get fatigued. Um, so, so maybe we're starting to see some slight improvements for the Giants' bullpen. Uh, all right, moving on. Chunichi took two of three from Hiroshima, a rare series dub for the Dragons uh, and on the road, no less. So that's extra rare. Seiya Hosokawa had a big, big series, four extra base hits. Diane Viciedo finally hit his first homer of the year. Uh, and for the Carp, Kota Hayashi hit his first home run since October of 2021. Uh, once upon a time, Hayashi was supposed to be the third baseman of the future for this team. He hit double-digit home runs a as a 20-year-old rookie, which is very hard to do, but uh, didn't even appear in a single game on the top team in 2022. Just forgot how to hit for, for an entire year. Now he's back, though. You know, that, that one home run has basically been his only highlight so far, but... Uh, I'm glad he's at least back on the top team, still very young, does have uh, 20 homer upside down the line. Uh, and then finally, Hanshin swept the occult uh, for three games, Tigers won the opener handily, but then the next two games were very, very tight. Uh, game two, Swallows led 5-4 uh, to four in the ninth, Tigers are down to their last out, and then Sheldon Noisy hits a ball out to right field that was completely misplayed uh, by the pinch runner Hidetaka Namiki, ends up going for a triple. Then Yusuke Oyama walks, and Teruraki Sato just shatters the hearts of Swallows fans with a two-run double. Tigers take the 6-5 lead, uh, and they go on to win. That blown save was, was definitely not on Kazuto Taguchi. Um, I'm not sure if Namiki could have caught Noizy's ball, but it should have been a single at worst. Um, but yeah, that completely put the momentum on Hanshin's, Hanshin's side, so a really tough loss for the Swallows and a loss that proved to, you know, kind of be a domino effect going forward, uh, which we'll talk about. But yeah, the, the following day, another game that was easily winnable for the Swallows. Sai Snead and, and Masashi Ito both pitched very well. Uh, game ends up going to extras, tied up at three apiece. But then, again, after two outs and nobody on, the Swallows blew it. Naofumi Kizawa walked, uh, walked in a run, and then Yusuke Oyama, or Yusuke Oyama was the one that walked. Uh, and then Teruaki Sato, for the second straight night, clears the bases with a double. Munitaka Murakami uh, did hit a monster homer in the bottom of the inning, uh, but it was too little too late as the Swallows lost 7-4. Uh, that was also their eighth consecutive game without a win, seven losses and one tie at that point. Uh, and, and that's when you really started to realize the Swallows might be in big trouble. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll just move right on to the Swallows, the, the following series, uh, the, the May 26th to 28th games now, uh, the final series before interleague play began. Uh, and the Swallows went into Hiroshima and got swept again. No blowout losses or anything, but Yakult did not have a lead the entire series. Just generally a terrible performance again. Uh, scored four runs in the first game, but then Masa Masato Morishita and Drew Anderson totally shut them down. Both of those two for the Carp have been excellent uh, the past couple times out, uh, which is especially encouraging for Morishita as he's fresh off elbow surgery. He looks much more like his 2020 Rookie of the Year form, uh, than, than the inconsistent stretches we saw during 2021 and 2022. Uh, we know that when he's at his best, he is a true ace and one of the best pitchers in all of Japan. So great effort by the Carp pitching this series. Um, but for the two-time defending Central League champs, this made it an 11-game winless streak. Moving on, Chunichi took two of three from DNA. So again, the Dragons with a surprising series victory. Uh, uh, this time it was at home. All the games were low scoring, uh, which is a specialty for the Dragons. Um, the, the only way they can win is usually by holding their opponents. And that's exactly what they did here. Shinosuke Ogasawara was marvelous in the opener. Seven shutout frames with nine Ks. He's kind of took over Yudai Ono's ace role ever since last year. And, and he's just run with it. Uh, Rydal Martinez shut the door, they won 1-0. Second game, Base Stars scored 2 in the first, but that was all they got the rest of the way. Trevor Bauer, you know, after his quote-unquote adjustment start on the farm, came back through six innings of two-run ball. Uh, both of those runs came off solo shots by Seiya Hosokawa, the former Base Star. You know, Hosokawa just went ballistic in May, ended up winning the CL Player of the Month. He'll be popping, his name will be popping up a lot more. Uh, as this recap goes on. Uh, but anyway, the game was tied at 2 until the ninth, and that's when rookie Kaito Muramatsu got a walk-off infield single. 
pinch runner Kosuke Ito with some very aggressive base running scoring all the way from second base. The Dragons had a chance to sweep uh, the following day, but Shinichi Onuki had other ideas. Uh, almost threw a complete game shutout, but uh, ended up going 8 and 2 thirds, 1 run. Yasuaki Yamasaki came in and got the final out, uh, and that was that. Moving on, Hanshin swept Yomiuri, so uh, they came out of this series with an 8 game winning streak, just ridiculous in the month of May. Uh, they ran laps around the entire Central League competition. This was a pretty tight series with their rivals, but the Giants just couldn't push across enough runs. You know, final scores were 2 to 1, 3 to 2, and 4 to 1. Uh, if you're only scoring four runs all series, you're probably not going to win much. Uh, and, and so this was a rare case where the hitting, more so than the pitching, was to blame for the Giants' shortcomings. Uh, now, going up against Kotara Otake and Hiroto Saiki, you know, that's understandable. Those two are fantastic. But against Takuma Kirishiki, uh, you'd expect a little bit more from the Giants' offense. So, good job by the Tigers, not so much by the Giants. Getting back to the Pacific League, Oryx beat Cebu two games to one. Not a particularly memorable series, you know, fairly low scoring. I don't remember many moments. Uh, but both teams had a star return from injury, so Yutaro Sugimoto missed mo most of May, came back and immediately homered in the series opener. That gave him nine home runs on the year, which at the time was tied for the league lead. It's not anymore, uh, but you know that was very impressive considering all the time he missed. And then for the Lions, Sosuke Genda returned. You know, he broke his finger during the WBC, played through it for the tournament, which is just ridiculous. Um, but you know, he missed the, two, the first two months of this season. Uh, rookie Ryosuke Kodama was doing a, a very fine job defensively in his absence, but it's just really hard to make up for that consistent contact hitting and speed that Genda provides. So, um, moving on, SoftBank and Lotte, they split 1-1. The Marines came into this series in tip-top shape. They were cruising, and they almost got out of Fukuoka without a loss, but Yuki Yanagita delivered a walk-off hit uh, in the 12th inning in Game 1. So, you know, that, that game was super back and forth early on. Both starters, Shuta Ishikawa and Atsuki Taneichi, got knocked around a bit. Uh, but then the bullpens held it all the way into extras. Until, like I said, SoftBank strung together some hits in the 12th. Uh, and Yanagita walked it off. Uh, and then the following day, Roki Sasaki made his return after missing a few weeks with a blister. He pitched six innings, gave up three hits, two earned, one walk, struck out nine. By his standards, that's that's not the best start, proving once again that he is somewhat mortal on the road. But obviously, he was still outstanding. Uh, Shogo Nakamura and Gregory Polanco, though, were the main story stories of this game. Uh, they, they combined to go five for eight with two homers and eight ribbies. Totally carried the offense. Nakamura, in particular, has been very good in May. Uh, after, after a terrible April, and he's doing pretty well in June as well. Alright, and then wrapping up this set of games, Rakuten won 2 of 3 from Nippon Ham. Tough loss for Hiromi Ito, who was excellent through 7, um, but had some bad luck in the 8th. Can't exactly remember what it was, but I think there was a really softly hit ball or a play that the fielder should have made to open the inning, and then Hideto Asamura swatted out a 2-run shot to flip the score. So the Eagles won 4-3, uh, Fighters won the following day 3-1, to one. Submariner Kenya Suzuki just defying the odds again. He threw five shutout innings, gave up three hits and four walks with zero strikeouts, and yet he didn't surrender a single run. His ERA at the moment is below two. Uh, then in the rubber match, it was raining for most, uh, most of the game, so there wasn't much action, but uh, it was a great pitcher's duel between Kosei Shoji and Koki Kitayama, two young pitchers with, you know, very bright futures, I think. Uh, Shoji went... Uh, all nine innings in this one gave up three hits and two runs, while Kitayama gave up one run in seven innings. Uh, but Justice Tanaka blew the save in the ninth, so it went into extras, and Takeru Okajima walked it off uh, in the twelfth. So series wins have obviously been pretty hard to come by for Rakuten this season, and that was huge for them to take this one, especially at home. Um, all right, now we get to the to the first week of interleague. One of my favorite times of the season, seeing teams that almost never play each other face off. Uh, and we had some interesting results. So so first off, let's get right back to the fighters. They took two of three from Yakult at home, and the hero was Chusei Manami. First interleague game of the year, he took 43-year-old Masatori Ishikawa deep twice to give him, at the time, the MPB lead in, in homers with 11. 
Um, so what so what a year Manami is having, you know, PL player of the month in May. He's top 10 or even top five in the PL in almost every offensive category right now. Uh, I've made it no secret that he's one of my favorite players. Just just super happy to see him flourish this year. Only 23 years old. Uh, but anyway, that, that was uh, all the offense the fighters needed as they held on in one two to one. They also won the following day, 5-2. to two. Kosuke Kato hit his first MPB home run and then immediately followed up with uh, another one. Uh, so that was the Swallows' 12th and 13th consecutive losses, respectively. But then they finally snapped the losing skid with a 5-0 win in Game 3. Saisnead pitched very well, obviously been one of the few bright spots in this rotation. And then Murakami uh, in the first inning just had a ridiculous home run, effortlessly went the other way. Uh, with a ball that totally beat him and that gave him double digits on the year so his over num overall numbers still look a bit underwhelming because of that awful first month but he has been a, a top 10 top 15 hitter in the league ever since april ended uh june was when he began his uh, monster run last year so definitely expecting big things from him again as we enter uh these summer months the Swallows are going to need him if, if they want to right the ship, uh, but you know they, they've put themselves in a pretty big hole. Moving on to the Lions and the Tigers, where Cebu actually won this series two games to one. Certainly improbable considering that the Lions looked really poor in the weeks prior, uh, while the Tigers were the hottest team in MPB. And even though this series was in Saitama, there were more Tigers fans than Lions fans at the stadium. Uh, Hanshin did win the opener 3-1. Shoki Murakami continued his dominant rookie campaign going 8 innings, 4 hits, 1 run, 9 punch outs. Atsuki Yuasa recorded the save. Uh, he was out of action for about a month, but he's back uh, in the late inning mix now. But then the Lions kind of took over and, and it felt like they had control of the series the rest of the way. Uh, they pitched very well, despite their starters not going very deep in, in either game. Uh, so props to the staff collectively, holding the Tigers to just to just five runs the whole series. Uh, Tatsushi Masuda finished both games. Uh, and this was definitely a missed opportunity for the Tigers against a weak team. Um, as they just kind of have their momentum halted here. Uh, they, they were so good in, in the month of May that they can afford a slight stumble like this. Uh, though I will say I never want to see Yuki Nishi facing a lineup the fourth time through the order again. Uh, he's just not the pitcher he once was, and even though they probably would have lost that third game anyway, I think it was a mistake to give him such a long hook, uh, or I guess he pitched in that second game, uh, and it kind of allowed the, the, the Lions to seize the momentum for the rest of the series. Uh, now speaking of leaving in a pitcher way too long, Hawks vs. Dragons, Chunichi wins it 2-1 in Fukuoka, an upset almost on the proportions of David vs. Goliath. Obviously, I'm exaggerating, exaggerating a little because Chunichi has actually been pretty decent recently, but still, you look at the talent gap on these rosters and it shouldn't even be close. Um, you know, now Higashiyama was left in way too long in Game 2. The Hawks just obliterated them in the opener 13-5, but the entire Dragons lineup had a hit in that game, so the offense was showing up this series, and it wasn't just Hosokawa being a one-man wrecking crew. And so I think it made absolutely no sense for uh, Fujimoto to give Higashiyama the seventh inning of that second game with a score tied at one. He was already well over 100 pitches. Higashiyama is a good pitcher, I think even an underrated pitcher, but he's not elite. Uh, I understand Roberto Osuna wasn't available this series, so they wanted to get length out of Higashihama, but they have so many other great relievers that they, they could have easily shut down this rally much earlier. Instead, Higashihama is left in for 120 pitches and he ends up allowing 5 runs in the 7th, Kenta Bright uh, with the big bases clearing double, the Dragons uh, added on one more in the 9th, and they won 7-1. Uh, and then in the rubber match, it was very tight until the end, but the Dragons just looked like the better team. Every time the Hawks would score, the Dragons would answer right back. Joe Gunkel for the Hawks was, was not particularly good. Uh, he's had kind of a rough time adjusting to the Pacific League after a, a couple of solid years with the Tigers. Um, you know, if, if he was on any team other than the Tigers, I don't think they would have been able to afford to get rid of him with, with the kind of solid numbers he was putting up. But the Tigers have so much pitching that... Uh, they could let him go and went to the Hawks, uh, and it just hasn't worked out for him so far. But it was tied at 5 going into the 8th, 
And that's when pinch hitter Shuhei Takahashi drove home uh, Muramatsu with a double off Yuki Tsumori. Daisuke Sobue had a shutdown eighth, and then Rydal Martinez got the save in the ninth, punching out Yuki Yanagita to end the game. And actually, after the after this initial interleague series, the Dragons had the best team OPS in all of MPB. Uh, so part of that is a good job by the Dragons, finally kind of punching above their weight for once. But part of that is just the Hawks pitching completely crapping the bed against the lineup that they should be carving up left and right. Next up, Baystars vs. Eagles. DNA took two of three on the road. Shota Imanaga threw a complete game in the series opener, gave up two runs, struck out nine. Shugomaki had a big home run in the top of the ninth, which gave DNA uh, a much needed insurance run that ended up being the difference maker. Uh, and then the Eagles managed to pull out the second game, Masahiro Tanaka, with a strong start. But then the Bay Stars came back and obliterated poor Ryota Takinaka and the rest of the Eagles pitching, putting up 17 hits and 11 runs in total. Shugomaki had a four hit day. Taiki Sekine had three hits, continuing his breakout campaign. Uh, and Tyler Austin chipped in with his second multi-hit game of the series, which is obviously very promising uh, because he barely played in 2022 uh, and he didn't have a single pinch hit game since, uh, or single multi-hit game rather, since 2021. He was reduced to a pinch hit role in 2022. So in a PL park, able to DH, very good for Austin since his body is, is so fragile. When he's healthy, we know what he's capable of based on the 2020 and 2021 power production. Um, and I expect him to kind of be eased into the everyday lineup. Buffaloes versus Carp up next. Oryx won this series 2-1. Uh, first game was an absolute gem by Yoshinobu Yamamoto. He had a few starts early on where he wasn't really pitching like himself, but the underlying numbers still looked excellent. Uh, and so now he's really starting to settle in. This is where Yamamoto becomes the most dangerous. Last two years, he's won the Triple Crown. First two months were, were very good, but it's June onwards where he really becomes a beast. Uh, and we're already getting a glimpse of that this year. He went eight innings, two hits, no runs, eight strikeouts in this particular outing. Following game was nine to two uh, in favor of the Buffaloes again. Shunpeita Yamashita threw six scoreless innings, lowering his season ERA to 0.84. Uh, and then fellow rookie Tokumasa Chano had a huge night. Three hits, drove in six runs, even hit his first career home run, which happened to be a grand slam. Um, so then the Buffaloes went for the sweep but the Carp were able to pull one out. Shogo Akiyama with a three-run homer, uh, and, and that was all they needed as Aaron Curry went seven strong. All right, and capping off uh, the first set of interleague games is the Giants and the Marines. Uh, Yomiuri took this one two to one. Big series win for the Giants on the road against the PL pennant leaders. Uh, all the games were very close. Yuji Nishino shut down the Giants offense in game one, but then the Giants powered their way to a seven to one, a seven to four victory in game two. Hirokazu Sawamura coughed up back-to-back -back jacks to Okamoto and Sho Nakata in the eighth inning. That was actually Okamoto's second home run of the night. Sawamura is having a really rough time right now after a pretty strong start to the season, so, so not sure what's going on, but honestly, he's pretty unplayable at this point. Certain, certainly not in high leverage spots, at least. Uh, and then Game 3 went to the Giants as well. Okamoto hit another bomb, so, you know, kicking off interleague on the right foot. All right, moving on to the next series of games, June 2nd to June 5th. Uh, there was a mini typhoon that rained out half of the series openers, but then most of them were made up the following Monday anyway, uh, apart from the Swallows and Eagles, who played uh, just a two-game set. Swallows got to the Rakuten starters early in both games, put up nine runs on Saturday, five runs on Sunday, uh, and so they won both games and finally strung together some wins after that extended losing skid. Uh, Hanshin Lotte was a great series, uh, two first place teams in their respective leagues going at it. It ended up technically being a sweep in favor of the Tigers, two wins and a tie. Uh, but I think the Marines deserve to, to win at least one game here. Uh, I, I mean, they played their hearts out. Down by three in the ninth inning of the series opener, they managed to tie it off Atsuki Yuasa, ending his 39 appearance scoreless streak that went all the way back to July 1st of last year. Um, so that by itself is an achievement for the Marines, but uh, Ryuhei Obata unfortunately uh, spoiled the day for the Marines as he walked it off in extras. 
Game 2 was a total pitcher's duel, Roki Sasaki versus Hiroto Saiki. My eyes were glued on this one, uh, very few hits to go around, especially in the early innings. But the Tigers squeezed out one run against Roki, uh, and then Saiki was just dynamite, throwing a complete game shutout, striking out 12. Uh, Roki only gave up one hit, so, you know, he didn't deserve to lose. Granted, he did walk four and he hit one batter, so a little more wild than we're used to seeing. Uh, but it, but this ended up being his first L of the 2023 campaign. Uh, and then there was a lot of back and forth in the finale, Yusuke Oyama and Koki Yamaguchi exchanging three run shots. But in the end, no winner could be determined after 12 innings, so the Tigers came out on top of the series, uh, which was important after the, after the disappointment they had against Cebu. Uh, but I do think there were positives for the Marines to take away. Next series, SoftBank took 2 of 3 from Hiroshima, good rebound after losing to the Dragons obviously. Uh, not too much noteworthy here other than that Tsuyoshi Wada took a line drive off his hand in game 1, had to come out. Uh, and then the rest of the Hawks pitchers did a very good job in what essentially became a bullpen game. Game 2, Masato Morishita, 7 shutout innings, only 2 hits. Like I mentioned earlier, he's been lights out after coming back. And then in Game 3, Drew, Drew Anderson threw 5 no-hit innings, but Roji Kuribayashi uh, blew it in the 6th. Good to see him healthy and pitching on the top team again, but man, he is not the same pitcher that we saw in 2021 or 2022 best closer in Japan coming into the year uh, and he has just been anything but after sustaining what we thought was just a minor oblique injury in the WBC it wasn't even an in-game injury it happened in practice uh, but yeah he he's just struggling to hit his spots right now uh, and and he has now lost six games uh, which is tied for the league lead in MPB and obviously to do it as a reliever is not pretty um, Alright, Bay Stars versus Lions, DNA wins 2-1, to one. Bauer had the longest start of his MPB career thus far, 8 innings, 2 runs, 10 strikeouts, very good, though the Lions are not a major test given their lack of firepower, especially with Nakamura injured. Uh, game 2, Lions seem to have it in the bag after Kaima Tyra threw 7 scoreless frames, but ironically, now that Tyra isn't a late inning option for them, the bullpen blew it with five unanswered runs from the Bay Stars in the eighth. So uh, the Lions totally let that one slip away. Luckily for them, they got to Kentaro Tyra early in the finale uh, and, and were able to, to hold on to salvage at least one win. Uh, it would have been amusing if we got to see Tyra versus Tyra, of course, but maybe that will happen next year. Uh, next is Buffaloes versus Dragons. Oryx wins 2-1, Chunichi actually won the opener uh, on an 11th inning walk-off by Muramatsu, so Chunichi at this point was 3-1 against Oryx and SoftBank, two PL powerhouses, and it was kind of like, what's going on? Uh, but of course, that did not last forever, as the Buffaloes won the next two games, just superb pitching. Uh, as usual, Hiroya Miyagi had a complete game, two-hit shutout in Game 3 with double-digit double digit Ks, outlasted Hiroto Takahashi, who was also marvelous, striking out 13 in 7 scoreless innings. Uh, so that was definitely one of the best duels of the year between these two young studs that both represented Samurai Japan. Um, but the Buffaloes lineup breached the Dragons' defense once Takahashi came out, uh, and that's all she wrote. Giants versus Fighters next up. This went 2-1 in favor of Nippon Ham. Giants pitching just could not stop the fighters' offense. They ended up scoring 20 runs this series. Gosuke Kato, Chusei Manami, and Ariel Martinez were the standouts. Um, so this was really when Kato was on a tear. Four homers in four games going back to that Swallow series. Uh, but yeah, a combination of the fighters' hitters clicking uh, and the Giants pitchers just being bad as usual contributed to a really lopsided run differential, but the Giants did pull out a, uh, a win in Game 2, Kazuma Okamoto with a walk-off double, keeping up his heroic season, and Foster Griffin pitched very well again, one of the few bright spots uh, in the staff this year, but he suffered a small injury, so he was removed from the active roster after the game, which is really bad timing because Tomoyuki Sugano is coming back, so... Just when you think the Giants might have some more stability in their rotation, someone else has to go down. Um, that does it for the June 2nd to 5th games. 
Moving on to the June 6th to 8th series, uh, this will be the final games I cover in this video. I'll save the June 9th to June 11th games for the next time because uh, I'm recording this before the Sunday afternoon games, so I obviously don't have the full picture yet. Uh, but let's start with Oryx versus Yomiuri. Yamamoto once again was stellar in the series opener. Eight innings, one run, back-to-back, -back, starts going eight, uh, lowers his season ERA to 1.82, um, so the Buffaloes won that game in a low-scoring affair, but then surprisingly, the Giants shut out the Buffaloes the next two games. You know, this is the worst pitching staff in the league going against the best offense in the league by WRC+. Uh, and somehow the Buffaloes just couldn't score. Um, now they were facing Shosei Togo and Iori Yamasaki, a couple of the Giants' best arms, obviously. Um, both of them threw eight shutout frames. Uh, still, you know, they had some opportunities and they just didn't cash in. So Yomiuri won game two by a score of 10 to nothing. Adam Walker with a monster performance, five for five, a double shy of the cycle. I'd like to see him be an everyday player, uh, but they don't like playing him without a DH, which is unfortunate. I think they should just, you know, accept the bad defense and play him because he is such a good hitter. One of the best imports in recent years. Um... And then Game 3 went the way of Yomiuri by a score of 6 to nothing. though it was much closer than you'd think because they scored all those runs in the 10th inning, Yoshihiro Maru getting it started with a grand slam. So Yomiuri won the series 2-1, to one. but when you consider that Oryx was outscored 17-2, to two, it could have been worse for them. Uh, excellent effort by the Giants, but again, I'm not going to be fooled. They've looked good in series in the past, but then they often just collapse the next time around. Uh, and then they always are just hovering around 500. So there's room for optimism, yes, but, you know, since since both their bats and arms showed up for once, but don't get your hopes up quite yet. Giants have been a 500 team all year, uh, and I don't see enough to, to indicate that that's going to change. Uh, all right, moving on. Eagles beat the Tigers 2-1. to one. That was certainly a surprise again. One of the worst teams in the league beating one of the best teams in the league at the moment. Uh, so the Tigers stumble against another PL bottom dweller. Uh, Eagles scored four off Shoki Murakami in game one. Murakami has just been mowing down opponents all year, so he was bound to have a slightly off day eventually. Tigers won game two in blowout, blowout fashion. Masahiro Tanaka struggled once again, uh, just not finding his groove consistently these past, these, these past few years. He does have the occasional start where... Uh, he, he's good, but just, again, he, he's not the pitcher he once was. Uh, and then the Tigers were in prime position to win the rubber match after taking the lead in the 8th inning. All their runs were unearned, uh, but they had the lead going into the ninth. However, Atsuki Yuasa came in and just couldn't get the job done. Obviously, he had just lost that 39-game scoreless streak, but this time he gave up his first home run since July of last year. Hiroto Kobukata... Uh, got to him with a walk-off three-run bomb. Uh, of course, Yuasa missed quite a bit of time, so um, he's just taking time to readjust. Should be fine going forward, but uh, that was not a pleasant outing for him. Next, Hiroshima versus Nippon Ham. The carp swept. Uh, the fighters went into this series on a roll, and they didn't play bad, but the carp just played better. Uh, fighters were up for most of the first game, but Hiroshima scored two off Miyanishi in the eighth to come from behind. Then they won the following day 1-0. Takayuki Kato was excellent for the fighters, but Aaron Curry was even better. Seven innings of two-hit ball. Uh, Curry now has the lowest ERA of qualified pitchers in MPB, believe it or not. Uh, though the peripherals indicate that he is vastly overperforming, so don't really expect that to stick. Uh, and then the Carp completed the sweep with a 7-2 win. Uh, it was certainly closer than the score would indicate. Only one earned run for Naoyuki Uwasawa of the fighters but the defense cost them on a couple of occasions. Uh, and yeah, the fighters just didn't get enough offense this series. Credit to the car pitching for shutting them down after, you know, they just completely went off against the Giants. Next, DNA versus SoftBank. Good matchup here. You know, this was my preseason prediction for the Japan series and still very much could be a Japan series preview. Hawks won game one. Uh, Taisei Makihara with the walk-off. Uh, Kohei Arihara made his, made his Hawks debut, didn't get many strikeouts, but threw six and two-thirds scoreless frames. We'll see if he can become a pillar in this rotation the rest of the year or not. Uh, Bay Stars also got shut down in Game 2. Now Higashihama was lights out, seven shutout innings. 
He's once again been very good this year, though the ERA is a bit high uh, because he's had a few blow-up innings, but overall, solid veteran. Uh, and then the Hawks went for the sweep, but they fell short. Bay Stars got out to a 6-0 lead, almost blew it as the Hawks came storming back uh, and got within one. Uh, and they had a huge opportunity in, in the bottom of the ninth against uh, Yamasaki. But DNA survived the scare. Great series for Konsuke, uh, Kensuke Kondo, though. He has been getting really hot after uh, a mediocre start. Okay, Seibu versus Chunichi. Dragons win 2-1. The battle of the bad offenses. Not a very interesting series, in my opinion. Uh, and the first two games went pretty much as expected. They exchanged 2-1 to wins. Uh, Dragons did finally break through in the rubber match, uh, Seiya Hosokawa getting it done again, uh, also, but also Yohei Oshima and the rest of the guys chipped in, uh, so they scored eight runs. Yuya Yanagi did give up two runs himself, but he went the distance uh, with the complete game. And finally, last but not least, Swallows versus Marines went 2-1 to one in favor of Lotte. Uh, Swallows won the opener 10-3 to, to give them four series wins. Uh, Marines were, were leading in the late innings, but Manabu Mima was left in too long. Soma Uchiyama got to him, and then things got out of control for them after that as Yakult just kept adding on. Uh, then the Marines got back on track, though. Shutout victory in Game 2. CC Mercedes with 7 shutout frames. He's always a beast against Yakult for some reason, just matches up very well against them uh, historically. Uh, and then their other foreigner, Luis Castillo, had a nice start the following day. Seven strikeouts across six scoreless frames. Very promising after his less than stellar debut as a starter the previous time out. Definitely does have good stuff. He throws hard, uh, but I'm not sure if he's going to you know, stick in the rotation. He kind of reminds me of Robert Corneal of the Carp. Munitaka Murakami uh, did hit a two-run shot off Naoya Masuda in the ninth inning of Game 3 to avoid getting shut out in back-to-back -back games, but the Marines took the game and the series. So... Swallows back to their losing ways. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I didn't miss much. Like I said, I won't go over the current series from June 9th to June 11th because I'm recording this before uh, it's finished, but the standings on the screen do reflect the games through June 10th at least. Uh, and so far, the interleague standings are super, super tight. Uh, so this might be one of those rare years where it doesn't really end up affecting the standings uh, at the end of the year very much, which makes league play all the more important. Last year, the Swallows won every single interleague series, which uh, no team had ever done before, and that really created a huge gap between them and second place in the Central League. But this year, if anything, is drawing the teams even closer. Uh, so let's see what happens from here. Definitely very exciting. Any team can win on any given day. Thanks for watching. Uh, next recap should be in two weeks. Should be, you know, barring technical difficulties again. Uh, but let me know if you're okay with this format of going through each individual series, or if you like the old format where I sort of just talk about the team's recent performance uh, more broadly. See you guys next time. Remember to like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.